Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Metropolis Radio. Today, we are talking about streaming subscriber churn and the fact that, well, it's practically here to stay whether uh, whether these streaming services want to admit it or not. And guys, before we go any further, just remember that not all of my videos are going to be coming to the YouTube channel. Some will only be coming to my BitChute, Odyssey, and Rumble channels. So if you're watching this on YouTube and you have not started following me on at least one of those three alternative sites, the links to those are down in the description below. But anyway, guys, let's get into this article here from The Hollywood Reporter, and that is uh, streaming service subscriber churn is here to stay, De uh, Deloitte, uh, Deloitte survey forecast. Younger consumers are increasingly comfortable with a churn and return subscription strategy, forcing entertainment companies to adjust. Uh, fair warning to Netflix, Disney, Paramount, or any of the other entertainment companies looking to compete in streaming video. The problem of, subs of subscriber churn isn't going away anytime soon. According to Deloitte's 2022 Digital Media Trends Survey, the churn rate for streaming services in the U.S. has remained constant at 37%, with countries like the U.K., Germany, and Japan seeing about 30% churn rate. Uh, quote, the headline is that churn is here to stay. Jenna, Jenna, um, Jenna Ar, 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 I, I, I'm sorry, guys. I've never heard the name pronounced. Uh, Jenna Arbanis, uh, vice chair of Deloitte LLP and U.S. telecom media and entertainment sector leader. Mm, excuse me. In an interview with The Hollywood Reporter, it wasn't a one-time bump. Streaming companies are going to have to grapple with this consistent volatil volatility with subscribers. Perhaps more worrisome for streamers is that there is a clear there is a clear delineation by age, with over half of millennial and Gen Z Gen Z respondents saying they added, canceled, or added and canceled a streaming service in the past six months. Uh, "Quote: I think there is two driving factors behind it." Ar Ar Arbanasa says. First, they are comfortable with it. They are digital natives. Signing up for and accessing something and then canceling and re-upping is not daunting to them in the way that it is to some generations that are not digitally native. I can certainly think of my mom, who would have a hard time navigating that, whereas my son is happy to do that and manage his portfolio in a way he can get the content he wants. The second part of that is cost. They are, they are more cost-conscious than that generation. So-called churn and return is not a new phenomenon, with consumers increasingly getting comfortable with, comfortable with subscribing to a service for a particular show, knowing they can easily cancel and return in a few months when something else they want to watch becomes available. To fight that problem, services have a few options. For starters, services can continually evaluate their content and programming to keep it fresh and relevant and to discourage cancellations. Uh, quote, what is, what is the service missing that would enable those consumers to stay on the service, Arbanasa says. Content is what drives people to a platform. It is cost that makes them leave. So what is missing from their suite of options that would enable them to develop that longer standing relationship with that consumer? And then, of course, there is advertising, which can be used in free ad support streaming service, think Tubi or Pluto TV, or a subscription offering like Hulu or Peacock. And Peacock does offer a free version. Uh, Deloitte survey found that more than half of consumers are on board with an ad support offering, though a plurality of respondents in the U.S. say they preferred streaming service would have a higher price tag and no ads. 41% to 25% who say they would prefer an ad light subscription product and 34% who preferred a free ad supported service. Arbanas um, Ar Ar notes that consumers are comfortable with ads as long as they are relevant. Quote, I think ads are an important part of someone looking to be cost conscious, she says. It might actually be what keeps them. If you get costs low enough where it's not worth my time to cancel a subscription and I'm able to keep that subscription for a longer period of time because the cost is not that substantial and can support it through ads, I think there is a, I think there is a really important way to maintain consumer engagement for a longer period of time and they are tolerating it up to a degree. Now, do you guys, now in my opinion, how streaming services should curb the churn and burn is actually a very, very simple solution. It's to offer a free ad-supported version of their streaming service. Because I hate to break this to you, the market cannot sustain this many streaming services. You know, if you've got HBO Max and Netflix, I think Netflix is now what, like, like, is it like 15 or 16 bucks a month now? I can't, I can't remember. HBO Max is pretty expensive at 17 bucks a month. But to be fair to HBO Max, they, they, they hiked the price because they were offering the day and date streaming releases, right? The, 
you know, the stuff like Space Jam, A New Legacy, Matrix Resurrections, Godzilla vs. Kong, you could watch them on HBO Max while they were playing in theaters. So I understand the price hike, but there was no reason for Netflix to price hike their shit. But then you've got Hulu, Disney Plus, Paramount Plus, Apple TV is also in the, Apple TV Plus is also in the market. What else am I missing? Discovery Plus. Um, and there's probably, there's probably a couple of others that I'm, that I'm missing right now that's, that's, that's going over my head. But still, it's if they want to curb this churn and burn, offer a free version of your service that is ad supported. Look at the success of 2B TV right now. You know, that is it, that is entirely ad supported. As long as you're not overbearing with the ads, most people will to- most people will tolerate it. I mean, un- unless if you're going to play like 20 ads per hour, then yeah, that then yeah, that that does get quite quite a bit extreme. And it pretty much renders your service flat out unusable and it's going to cause people to go out. And I'm just going to say, it's going to cause people to go out and just pirate your shit anyway. So basically, if you're going to offer an ad support, if you're going to offer an ad support, a free ad supported tier, don't get too fucking greedy with, with the, with the advertising. Cause otherwise, like I said, people are going to then just, you know, ch- people are then ju- are, are just going to pirate your, sh- are, are just going to pirate your shit anyway to avoid all the ads because you made your service so goddamn unusable. I mean, this, this is, this is the only path forward. As I said, you know, you can't keep paying like 20 bucks a month for a streaming service here and a streaming service there. It's, it's not, it's not sustainable. At some point, the streaming services are either going to have to merge or offer the free ad support, the free ad supported tier that isn't fucking neutered. Not like what Peacock is offering where, you know, Peacock has an ad supported version, but it's so goddamn neutered that it's not, it's not even worth, it's not even worth discussing. And guys, that's pretty much all I got for you. If you stuck around this long, thanks so much for doing so. And if you've been following along, you know I'm terrible at ending these videos. So I will just see you guys uh, next time.